Well, welcome back, everybody. It is Tuesday. You know what that means? It's Keep Your Finger in the Text live report. Heath Putzel with you from Keep Your Finger in the Text, and we're back with a live report. We've had a lot of things going on, and of course, as summer kicks into swing, um, that's just going to make things a little bit more cranked up. So uh, I'm glad you're with us for the live report. A couple of things we have going on. Right now, we are in the middle or almost finishing up the Gospel of Mark workshop. It's been going on uh, from March 29th to June 14th, 7.30 p.m., which is tonight. And tonight, interestingly enough, we're going to start transitioning from getting the text right to how do we communicate it? How do we start formulating our sermon? How do we start um, putting the pieces together, taking what we've learned from our structure and translating that into an actual outline for preaching? Um, also, last night, we were in taking reps it's every Monday night from 7 p.m. Central, and we are involved in Psalm 34 right now. And we were studying the structure. We are wrestling with the structure, and we're not done yet. So that means uh, we're going to continue to wrestle with the structure to see exactly how the author has organized his text so that we can come up with what the author's aim is. Um, also coming up June 20th through the 24th, if you are available the George Whitfield Program, Annual Summer Fellowship Conference. We're going to be hosting a Keep Your Finger in the Text workshop, Preaching Proverbs. There is two tracks going on, and track two is where we focus in on the preaching. Track one is where you focus in on ministry development, partnership to support, what is it like to live as a full-time evangelist. And in track two, those who are participating in Preaching Proverbs are going to be assigned two texts. One, we're going to use for a small group presentation where we gather around and give you feedback. The other one, we're going to go ahead and have you preach out a 15 to 20 minute sermon on Proverbs, and we'll be providing interactive feedback um, with all the other participants providing in as well. And then shortly after the George Whitfield program annual training, we're going to be kicking off another Keep Your Finger in the Text workshop. And we're going to be putting the tools, principles, and strategies into another literary type. We're going to take a look at discourse. We've spent some time in narratives. We've spent some time in wisdom literature. And we're going to dive into an epistle. Um, I'm thinking possibly Colossians, and that, that's more to where I'm leaning, um, is Colossians. So be on the lookout for that as far as information coming out on that here just shortly. Well, as I mentioned in another report, um, I realized that taking reps is still new. And many of you may not be aware of what we do in taking reps, and it's an opportunity for us to continually put into practice the tools, principles, and strategies as we work on biblical texts. It is an open registration, so it is ongoing um, all throughout the year, and we take about six to eight, one hour per week, about six to eight sessions as we work through a text and provide an outline at the end for us to preach from. And I did mention that I was going to have a group discussion. And this live report is that group discussion where we're going to talk about keep your finger in the text, taking reps. And I have a couple of my brothers here who have been with us um, over the past couple of months working through text. And they're going to come on and share with you the impact that it's having on them. Um, so I do have uh, brother Pat Haggerty, who you've seen before on a live report. I do have Brian Conwell um, also as well. Um, from a live report, and also John Dawson on a live report as well. Brothers, welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Glad you guys could join me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. Now, I, I know not everybody gets a chance to see each other like we do every single week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I wanted to do is uh, get a chance to share with everybody um, taking reps, what they can expect, how has it impacted you, what prompted you to join in taking reps, so just to kind of have a discussion uh, to kick it off so that if somebody's like, hey, I've heard about taking reps or, you know, this is the first time hearing about it, what can I expect? So let me kick it off and I'll, I'll have you guys jump in and share um, as we go through um, some of the questions that I wanted people to take a look at. But the first one is, what prompted you guys to join taking reps? Whoever wants to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Well, I would uh, say what prompted me was a desire to understand better the scriptures in their entirety um, and not to be guided on my own, right? Mm -hmm. Self-study, to have uh, fellowship with other brothers in, in the word so that one could be edified, you know, as, as iron sharpens iron and to learn how to be faithful to the text and by being faithful to the text to be faithful to the Lord. Sure. And, and by doing that, share his gospel message the way that he intended for it to be shared. Right. Good. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I've been involved in open air preaching for a number of years and I kind of become discouraged about it just because I never really felt like I was quite properly prepared when I stood up and tried to to open air preach. And so uh, even though I'd preach sermons uh, in uh, a pulpit, situation at various churches it was quite different doing it on the street and just being able to interact with some other guys that are also doing it and learn um, some some biblical uh, hermeneutics and uh, structure and other things has really been helpful just to kind of re-energize my desire and uh, my uh, my preparation time, you know, is uh, better now, I think, and and it's it's an ongoing process, of course, but it's definitely uh, just realizing that you know I need to be better prepared. I guess it's the main it's the main focus of of my uh, my desire to to get involved. Okay. Well, he that felt uh, the Lord calling me to. Uh, open air preaching and but one of my concerns was making sure that when I open God's word that I'm not mm. taking his word out of context mm. and just one day uh, the Lord just brought um, a sports fan outreach you know and just when I was doing some search and then I came across um, looking at that, keep your finger in the text. Um, saw what that was about and knowing that the Lord put that in my path that mm. now I can come and, and be with these brothers and be with you and learn how to properly uh, look at the text, uh, look at the structure, look, look at the context, look just to better prepare me to go out and present or and proclaim uh, and preach his word. Um, and it's just been a blessing to me. Uh, I mean, I've only been a part of this since February. It's just early this year. Um, sure. And uh, just, just learning, uh, from, from these brothers and yourself has just uh, helped me so much. Yeah. Yeah. And John, I think you kind of kicked it off as well, not only why you joined, but some of the experience and, you know, for Pat and Brian, um, share with everybody who's either listening or going to listen to this at another point in time. What's the experience like in taking reps? I mean, you know, just kind of share with them some insights as to, you know, what we do each week and, uh, you know, just a little bit about your experience, even going through the process. Well, it always seems like there's never quite enough time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like it feels like once you really start, you take that first bite of the main course, right? You get the <laughs> mouthful of meat, potatoes, <clears throat> it, the, you know, the hour or hour and a half, it's, it's coming, gone. <laughs> Right. Right. But it makes you hungry for more. And, and it, 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 it ignites this, 
this desire within your soul to to be closer to God's word. And so in the weeks in between the meetings, it's really, it, for me, it, it pushes me to keep my finger in the text and to keep reading and to keep studying. It might not necessarily be well, the section of scripture that we're going over in the group, but it's still applying these principles to the other parts of scripture. Um, and the scripture comes alive once you start going through it properly. It mm. really does. You get to see the scripture for, for what it is. And it's, it's, a, it's a story. It's, it's a story, the greatest story ever told. And you really get to dive in below the surface to where I really think the majority of the church doesn't ever get to go. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I, I would say that the, the, uh, the class is challenging in uh, a good way. You know, it's... Uh, not just us sitting listening to uh, a lecture, but it's interactive. We're we're uh, sharing our thoughts about the text, going and uh, giving our uh, our reasoning as to what what we uh, think we see in the structure. And uh, you know, sometimes we uh, we agree, sometimes we we don't uh, necessarily agree. But it's an iron sharpens iron kind of situation at that point where we're able to. Uh, really, I guess, just uh, learn and grow, you know, in a situation where most of us don't really uh, have that kind of opportunity. Um, and even, I think, for people that that go to, like, a seminary uh, situation, they're not necessarily getting uh, what we're getting. And um, not that, you know, not to knock seminaries at all, they're they're great in their place, and and um, if they're you know solid and and uh, biblically you know uh, faithful, which uh, many of them struggle <laughs> in along those lines, I, from what I understand, but uh, just being able to work uh, work through things together, and uh, you know we're we're not just trying to fly totally by the seat of our pants. We're trying to uh, look at look at the text, and you know. Um, take advantage of, of the resources we have uh, to do that together. Uh, but it, it is it is really helpful. It, I think it just gives us more of a uh, of a desire and more of a track to run on as far as our own, you know, personal study as well and, you know, loving loving God's word more and, and just being uh, being encouraged. And I think that that's uh, that's that's something that we all need for sure. Yeah. John, you want to add anything to that? Well, as far as my experience is just, you know, being a part of this group and really <clears throat> learning uh, from each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as Pat said, you know, we, we may not always come to that same conclusion, but but we, we help each other out because someone sees something and shares with us and, and uh, opens our eyes, which the Lord's one who ultimately opens our eyes, but just gets us to look at this a, a different way uh, that, uh, that we're just learning uh, because wanting because we want to be faithful Mm -hmm. in preaching his word and uh, so yeah yeah you know it's one of the things that you know i think of every time i i kind of mention to people that we we take an hour which you're right brian it's not enough time we just start diving in before we know it it's like Time's over. Wait a minute. We get, we could still go for like three or four hours um, <laughs> and work through it. Just having time in, in the joy of God's word. 
Um, but let me, let me kind of uh, get your perspective on this too, because you know it almost sounds like uh, people would say, well, how is this any different? You guys are sharing your thoughts, your opinions. How is this different from you know what we hear every time in a Bible study about you know what does this mean to you or um, what what do you think about this passage? What would you say to somebody that says that? It's like, well, you guys have something you know supposedly special, but how is this different than a bunch of people just sitting around and talking about the text? How would you kind of respond to that? I think one of the biggest ways that it's different <clears throat> is that the concept of what does it mean to me is guided by what does it mean? It's, it's not our opinion. We're not guided by our opinion. Mm -hmm. We discuss our opinions. We, we bounce our opinions off of one another, but then we consult the scripture. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says something different then the scripture says something different. And, it, we accept that verdict. We accept the verdict of God's word. And if we're wrong, we're wrong. And it's okay to be wrong. Right. And it's okay to not know everything because we're not God. Right. And, and it's, it's very, it's humbling. Nobody's exalted above the word. Um, and so it's, it's a good lesson in humility and in learning. And, and knowing that this whole learning process will never be concluded mm -hmm. you know, and even in eternity, right? We'll spend right. an eternity learning about God. And, but the completion of truth and knowledge will happen with our face to face. Right. Mm. Right. So that's what we're striving toward in this group. And we're going through a process of, you know, looking at the context, um, uh, the, the, uh, greater biblical context, the immediate context, the uh, author authorial intent, like what what did it mean to the people that it was written to, right? And then uh, we, so there's a whole process that we're going through um, that gives us a framework for understanding the text itself, right? And so that is really the, the heart of the, I think the program is helping us see the structure and those those things that God has given us in in his word in order to understand it properly and then communicate it in uh, you know a, a um, evangelistic outreach kind of uh, situation, but mm -hmm. handle it properly and make sure that as, uh, as well, I've been saying, we're not just shooting, shooting from the hip, uh, talking off the top of our head, or whatever. Right. Which will, you know, I was, well, maybe some people can do it. Um, I think probably it's going to get, it's all, you know, what does it say in, in, in much, uh, in much talk, you know, the lack of not sin. And so in, in King James English, uh, you get up there and you talk for whether it's 15 minutes or a half hour or an hour. Uh, you know, our, our tendency is going to be to say something that is more, the temptation is when we say something that is not really as, uh, as pointedly, you know, Biblical as as um, as as on you know it's it just takes preparation I guess is the point it takes mm -hmm. some work to get there you can't just open your Bible stick your finger in and go okay I'm going to preach right so and I don't know that anyone's really doing that I mean you know I guess some people may be and but as I was saying before when I used to do it I mean I was kind of no, I knew I wanted to do it. I knew, you know, that it was worth doing, but just doing it, doing it well is, is hard. It, and so, <laughs> you know, if, if you take this class, it is challenging. It is, it, it takes some work, right? And, mm -hmm. um, but we shouldn't shy away from that. If we're going to get up and preach, we should right. be willing to put in some work to make sure that yeah. we are doing the best we can to represent uh, the God that, you know, uh, has has saved us and has sent us out. Amen. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just um, as we go through, uh, as, as Brian, as Pat said, the the biblical context, the historical context, you know, the structure. I mean, you help us, you know, by, by this class of getting us focused in on that scripture uh, where, where you're just not reading a verse and then just going off. It's the verses around that. It's, um, you know, so... Uh, th this class mm, is so beneficial in in making sure that we are preaching that text mm. and that we are not adding uh, to that text. Right. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that I, I heard all all of you kind of say is it's work. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I guess I could kind of sum it up that uh, it is work and we're, we're doing text work. Um, so yeah, we're not, we're not kind of, I guess you could say just sitting around giving our, our random thoughts. Um, they are guided by the text. Um, we, I think Pat mentioned it previously. It, it's not, um, it's not really even a lecture. Um, although we do at times talk about pieces that we want to look at but um, I know most of you are either in a workshop right now, so you're seeing, even in uh, taking reps, that tools, principles, and strategies start to become a little bit more. Um, or Pat, I know you've been in some of the previous workshops. Uh, this is a chance for us to continue to put them into practice is really, you know, really the focus and the goal, so. Yeah. yeah. So, so let me let me ask you this question. Um, so far, most of you have. Uh, it's been a couple months. We've gone through a couple of texts. Um, you know, as we've been going through it, uh, the, one of the questions I want to uh, to ask you is, what has been uh, the biggest impact for you um, as you've been participating in taking reps? And there's a whole lot more of the sermonizing the word than what like Pat out, you know, then just opening up your Bible, sticking your finger in a couple of verses, being like, all right, I'm going to preach on that. It's so much more involved <clears throat> than just that, especially if you want to be faithful. And mm -hmm. that, that being faithful is a cornerstone of this whole program is, um, I think the term that you've used several times is guardrails. And, mm -hmm. and I think even at down in Kentucky, I think someone was talking about you don't want to swerve too hard to the left or to the right, you know, go from one ditch to the other. You want to be right in the middle where, where you're supposed to be. And and that's what this course really equipped the preacher, especially open air preacher to do is to stay in between the guardrails. And that's been huge for me. Um, mm. because sometimes it can be very difficult to sermonize the word especially on the street um, because you're trying to sermonize this word and give this message of the gospel while people are generally not doing very nice things in your direction. <laughs> <laughs> and so being able to have that focus and that background and that understanding of the, of the scripture really helps to maintain one, your bearing on the box and two, your faithfulness on the box while um, essentially being out there on the front lines in this great spiritual war that the scripture talks about, because that's where the front line is. Right. You know, and personally, it's made me a lot more uh, excited about getting out there and, and preaching when I have the opportunity and uh, it's just been more, more of a a joy to do it and I guess opened up uh, I think uh, uh, avenue uh, for preaching um, that just you know it, it it is quite different really than and than what I than what I've, I've done before and I guess you know 
I think before it was more a matter of kind of hit and miss and uh, sometimes I felt like I really, you know, was able to get up and, and preach something that was faithful and impactful, but I just never, you know, I mean, sometimes I did feel better about, about what I preached, but it was more, as I said, just, I mean, not necessarily uh, that I'm in any way, you know, always doing it exactly what it should be done, but I feel like I feel better about what I'm doing now. And I, I feel like there's, you know, it's opened up a kind of uh, a much more fruitful kind of um, mm. ministry opportunity. And, and I'm hoping to, you know, also influence some of the guys that, that help and, and encourage some of the guys that preach with us um, to, uh, you know, uh, be more, uh, more focused, you know, more, more preaching the text and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, if you imagine if you got up every Sunday as a pastor or an elder, um, in your church and just preach basically the same thing, that would get awfully boring, not only for the people that hurt you, but for you, it'd get awfully boring, you know? And so, you know, just being able to say, I guess, look at different texts, like what we've been in Psalms and been in the Gospels and, um, you know, I've I've uh, I've preached out of Genesis and Ecclesiastes, and there's all these different places where we can go and say, okay, we can we can preach God's word and show, and and then you know, bring it uh, to Christ without trying to you know manhandle it into something you know that people are going, how in the world did they get from point A to point B? But there is a connection there, and uh, even though it's not a text that would necessarily be considered, um, on the face of it, an, an obvious kind of evangelistic text. I mean, there's all sorts of all all the scripture points to Christ, and so finding those finding those connections and learning how to preach them, I think is it's important. I think it's what uh, more more of what the apostles did um, in in their preaching. They they were certainly preaching a lot from. Uh, the Old Testament, I think, um, especially mm -hmm. when they were reaching out to the Jewish uh, nation, but uh, as well as, you know, with the Gentiles too, you know. So knowing that we have this really firm foundation underneath us, uh, that it's it's all of Scripture points to Christ is, is um, an important aspect of it as well. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when when I first came on um, to be a part. Uh, you were going through Ecclesiastes, and I was like, "How in the world am I ever going to be able to preach Ecclesiastes?" <laughs> um, but coming alongside, um, learning, um, and then being able to take that outline when we finish, you know, the, um, and then to be able to go and preach that, uh, hmm. because we all have different, um, uh, ministries. We all have different, mm -hmm. um, people that we are, are preaching to, uh, but be able to take that and preach that word, um, it, it, I was taken back at first, but then I'm like, you know, it's really not me. It's the Lord using his word to speak through me. You know, it's okay. his word that's going to convict. You know, it's not, it's not my words. He's the one who's going to convict and draw people to himself. And to see people after I got through preaching that, mm sermon come forward and just wanted to talk to me um mm -hmm. you know it, it was just um like i said it just showed me that that it's the lord's word and we are his mm -hmm. instruments 
Um, yeah. And that's and just weekly, just, just being <laughs> with uh, the brothers and, and going through and just learning. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I'll, I'll say the biggest impact for me is gleaning off of you guys. Um, you know, as we go through this, it is truly iron sharpens iron, you know, and sometimes we'll all take a look at it and we'll see things uh, potentially differently or I'll see it from a different angle. Um, and just so that everybody knows, not every text um, that we go through is uh, kind of pre-studied ahead of time. Um, <laughs> some of some of them have been that we we've asked uh, to dive into, but there's been others that you know these are fresh looks. Um, I, I can recall like Matthew uh, eight, the last one we went through. Um, this was a fresh look in the Gospels and going through it, and just so I, I think as you guys, uh, I think Pat mentioned it, you you start to expand mm -hmm. the places you preach from. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the impact is just gaining, gaining the, the, the brotherly camaraderie as we work on this text together. Um, and, and John, as you said, we get an outline out of it. <laughs> so the product of our work, uh, for those of you that are listening, is um, every six to eight weeks is we come away with, you know, a, a skeleton outline or a very good outline that we can add. Uh, suggested illustrations and gospel connections in the places where the text brings it out. And uh, you can add your own personality to it because we don't want everybody to preach the exact same words. There's things that you can add to it. But we've done our faithful work in the text. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can be walking away confidently that we've done what we could to dive in and do the heavy lifting that God has placed on that text. Well, just so, build oh, go ahead. John had just said about the power of God's word is, you know, down there in Kentucky, I was preaching out of Romans chapter one. Mm. To the non-believer, it's a pretty harsh section of scripture. Um, but there were some good conversations that took place from people who stepped forward after mm -hmm. the word of God, wanting to have conversations. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's just a testament to his power and his word. And it's, it's just amazing to be a part of it, to be, to be right. that fabric. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And I think the other issue too, is just understanding that our audience out there, um, whether it's a sports uh, event or just, you know, uh, uh, downtown or, well, you know, street corner or whatever, we have fellow believers that are walking by too and we're trying to encourage those people to be more evangelistic not less or not you know not horrified that we're i don't know mangling the text or just mm -hmm. being um you know being uh coming across as uh unloving or legalistic or which i realized that some of that is you know, coming from people who are unbelievers, you know, they're gonna they're gonna have they have a certain view of street preaching and street preachers, and in some ways we have to work hard to disabuse them of those prejudices. You know that they think right that we're out there basically with you know uh, a long finger of uh, you know pharisaical uh, you know admonitions, telling them that they need to you know be much more like me, you know, be, you need to stop saying the way I've stopped sinning or something along those lines. And, you know, that, that is a challenge. And uh, there's more and more people, it seems, that are out there doing that type of thing. And, and maybe they're kind of preaching Christ in some ways. Um, they're saying some of the same things that we would say, but then underneath it all is this legalistic kind of mindset. And, uh, you right. know, we're not, we're certainly not trying to take away from the truth that, you know, we're called to, to strive to live a holy life um, by, by the grace of God. But that's a whole different thing from somehow thinking that we're justified by uh, that effort. 
you know, and so just just to say by actually preaching the text, we're doing something different in of that because the the people that are not well that are that are preaching legalism, they're really not preaching the text, um, or and they're not ultimately preaching Christ either, and and that's the thing that we're you know really uh, wanting to get to, but to do it to do it in the right way and. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes in my case, you know, I've thought that I was preaching Christ a lot more than I really was, you know, mm. uh, you know, like my wife has pointed out to me, well, hon, like I listened to a half hour of that sermon and you really didn't mention Christ. And I'm like, okay. Um, but I was getting there, you know, and she's like, no, but you know, you could have, you could have said something here. You could have said something there. And it's like, well, yeah, I guess you're right. I could have, you know. And so mm -hmm. um, we we don't want to be imbalanced. The law is important. Uh, you know, the, uh, what Scripture says about uh, God's God's holiness and His wrath and and is, I mean, extremely important. But it's not the gospel, and and so we have to uh, be careful that we're. Not just being balanced, but I guess being being very, you know, I guess I hate the word intentional because I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why, but you know, we, we we have we we have a plan, you know, we really are, we mm -hmm. really, you know, like we've we've thought it through and like we're going, okay, yeah, I have a plan because when you're out there on the street, as as we've mentioned, there's a lot of distractions, you know, and mm -hmm. so. If you don't really have a plan, it's really easy to get distracted by that person who walks by, makes a comment, or um, you know whatever else is going on. And so, having a good plan in our mind as to where we're going, you know, can help counteract that and can help keep us um, focused as you know we should be. So, right, right. You know, and Heath, when we're out there, you know. We don't know if we have, you know, a majority are going to be unbelievers, but there are mm -hmm. believers out there as well that, um, you know, that something, I mean, there's always something going on in our lives. We don't know, you know, but even for the believers out there, you know, they will sit down and listen. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's just God's work. It's His word uh, that, like I said, that He's given. You know that we are preaching His word, and it's for everyone out there. I mean, mm. um, I mean, I'll never forget the time that we were about to uh, have this wonderful opportunity uh, presented to us. And there was a family who was sitting behind me and he didn't want his young children to be a part of it. But he walked up behind me and he said, I thank you for preaching the gospel so that my children could hear it this morning. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, we just have to just be faithful, you know, and, you know, the, just one thing that just keeps coming over and over me every day is to be faithful in preaching his word until the day he returns or the day he calls me home. That's what I want to mm. do. And, and, being a part of this group, being a part of these men, you know, helps me do that. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, it's it's interesting. I Some of you even heard yesterday on our report from the Kentucky Derby, uh, but I heard several. Uh, we had a lot of law enforcement and civil magistrates around the area. And... You know, one thing that I got a chance to do is talk with one of the officers who had been 
you know, kind of directing people back and forth in, in directions around Churchill Downs and, you know, with it being restricted in a way. And I just started talking with him. And the one thing he said was, with all the other preachers out there, he said, I thank you guys for being out here. He's like, I could listen to you guys all day long, hmm. you know, because you're preaching God's word. Yeah. Um, and I knew what he meant compared to some of the other preachers that were out there. But, you know, it, it's, it, you know, John, as you said, um, Pat, as you said, that the testimony there that it's God's word that we're preaching, mm -hmm. you know, and watching, yeah. watching God's word have, have an effect. Amen. Well, I want to kind of do another round table kind of discussion here um, as well as we kind of wrap this up a little bit, but what's something personally you want someone to know about participating in taking reps? Um, so you guys have had a couple months under your belt, uh, you know, whether it's why somebody should come join us or, you know, something you want to personally share with someone um, about trying to participate or jump into taking reps, what would you share with them? It's not an endeavor to be undertaken lightly. Hmm. It, it's not something to just kind of, <clears throat> you're not there to just dip your toes in the water, check the temperature. Yeah, uh, I don't like it, or this, that, or the other. It's it's a commitment, and in order to get the the full value out of it, you have to attend the meetings. You have to be involved. You have to read the text. Um, it's not. It's kind of like the gathering of the saints, right? It's not just we gather on the Lord's Day and check the box and we're done for the rest of the week. That's that's not how this program works either. Um, you have to be dedicated to Christ. And you need to be dedicated to his word. Um, otherwise, you run the risk of leaving in the same place as when you showed up. Hmm. Without <clears throat> getting the edification that's there because you didn't want to commit the time. So I would say that it's better if you can't make that commitment to not make that commitment. And, and to maybe not preach. And, and maybe just... To, to learn, to listen, until you're you're at that spot where you can uh, make that commitment and you are mm -hmm. called and there is no question in your mind. Um, it's, it's just not something, it's not a hobby. It's a, it's a calling. It, it's, mm -hmm. you're an employee of God. You are his ambassador. You are a priest. You belong to him, and it's his mm -hmm. message that you have. It's your own message. Right. Amen. I, you know, I would say, you know, for guys maybe that are not, you know, they're just either thinking about doing something, um, doing opener preaching. Maybe they they do it once in a while. Um or even, you know, even if someone does it on a real regular basis, it's just hard for me to imagine that um, there's anyone who wouldn't benefit from it. Or on the other hand, you know, if, if you are really good at it, you know, um, by God's grace, I, you know, already, then we could use, you know, we could use some, some uh, of your wisdom that, you know, some of God's wisdom that he's given you you know uh so you know it's not it's not a huge commitment in the sense of time you know just for the class itself um you know there is uh there's a little bit of a financial commitment um 35 dollars a month is really not much for something like this you know for what we're getting out of it and you know, it really, you know, we, I mean, we would love to have anyone that is, uh, is thinking about it to join us and, uh, you know, be, uh, just be edified and edify us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just getting information. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a spiritual kind of, uh, it's a means of grace for us together to pray the work together and pray together and 
I guess we don't really pray together, but we're certainly <laughs> before, you know, before. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've done in, you know, through, through all of this is um, started before we go out, we have a prayer meeting that we do online and I use, uh, you know, a similar setup. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a blessing. I think it's helped, helped encourage some people. And, uh, you know, we do, we do need to, to, uh, avail ourselves of, of, uh, you know, the, the wisdom and, and, uh, some insight that God's given other brothers and sisters. Uh, right. You know, in this case, you know, it's, it's just brothers and as far as, as far as, uh, preaching, you know, on the street goes, but so I, I definitely encourage anyone that's considering it to, uh, you know, take time. And if, you know, uh, it, it would be a blessing to you, I think. The, uh, yeah, I mean, the $35 when I, <clears throat> sometimes you think $35. Am I going to really get anything for $35? <clears throat> well, I can tell you, you will. And I know... Uh, sometimes it's, <clears throat> uh, some may say, I don't have $35. Well, you know, instead of <clears throat> the way I look at it, instead of going out and uh, maybe going out to a restaurant, buying a meal, I'd rather take this $35 since being a part of this group a month and be spiritually fed because that's what happens that we are spiritually fed uh, going through this class going through to be prepared to go out and preach and proclaim god's word um, you know you allow us to have input on uh, different texts um, you know, and if, if anyone feels that they are being called to preach, this is the class. This is what they need to come and learn from. Because yeah. this <clears throat> being taught uh, from you, Heath, and, and the input from Pat, the input uh, from Brian, the input from Sterling that we, you know, and others who join, um, you will be prepared to go out and preach and proclaim. Um, and just come and join us. I mean, <clears throat> because it is iron sharpening iron. Mm. Well, good. I, I see Red's been on here. Uh, glad to have you, brother. I see Alex has been on here as well. Um, <laughs> previously, when Pat was speaking, hey, is that Pat? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, you know, uh, it, it, as you guys are listening, uh, this is an extension. Um, this was an extension of the workshops. Um, sometimes people say, what do I do now? I mean, we've gone through 12 weeks of, uh, of a workshop and how do I put this into practice? And, you know, sometimes it can be daunting after all of that information and how do you put it practically into play? And that's really what taking reps was. It was a, an opportunity to hopefully gather some brothers, as you've heard, um, Pat and Brian and John and Sterling and um, some others who have said, I can join, but then other things have gotten, um, you know, life has gotten a hold of them and they'll be back when things slow down a little bit. But that's what it's about. Uh, you know, if, if you're not in it every couple months, you want one text, you jump out for a little bit, come back in. Um, it, it's an opportunity for us to put into practice, as you've heard, the tools, principles, strategies to faithfully develop preaching sermons. 
And that's what better way than to gather around God's word and wrestle with God's word and look to have it second nature. Um, I, I think as you've heard uh, the, the term work, um, this is not a, a pontificating, I guess you could say, just sitting around, you know, what, what grand thing can we gather? Um, we do work <laughs> for an hour. And sometimes, uh, as Brian said, it's not enough. Uh, <laughs> we just get started in the meat of the work. And before we know it, the hour is over. Uh, but really, it is work. And, and we want to be about uh, honoring God with, with our work. So uh, we do meet every Monday night, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I do have uh, the links that you see there. There's links in the description as well. You can go out to sfoi.org, evangelist info. You can see all the information on the workshops. You can see all the information on taking reps. And as you've heard these brothers say, come join us. Come join us. Um, if you're looking at putting, how do I get into a text? How do I you know, develop um, a sermon, come join us. Um, really, that's what it's about. Our, our, our heart is to want to preach God's word faithfully. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way we know how is to gather together. And um, some of you may be doing that with your elders and your pastors as well. And uh, I would say fantastic, you know, fantastic to be with your elders and your pastors to be able to, to work through this. But I know sometimes um, even the, the elders and the pastors don't necessarily, and that's not a knock. I'm just saying uh, they don't get together and, and wrestle with the word even when they're preaching that way. Um, but just seeing the need that, you know, we want to faithfully proclaim God's word outside um, of the church or as the opportunities inside the church. And uh, we want to be able to help you with that. So mm -hmm. come join us however uh, you want to, whether it's a workshop, uh, whether it's sometimes a live a workshop like the George Whitfield program or kind of a mini workshop prior to Super Bowl outreach. Um, or if you're like, hey, I can't go through a 12 week. I just want to jump into taking reps. Let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll be more than happy to welcome you in and have you dig into the word with us. So if you have questions, get a hold of me, heathputzel at gmail.com, heathputzel at gmail.com. Gentlemen, any last uh, parting words before we leave? Just, I appreciate y'all and, you know, praying for all the folks that are out there trying to uh, faithfully preach the word. And, you know, that's, uh, it is a calling, as uh, as John has said, and, you know, it's something that we all, we all want to take seriously. Mm. Soli Deo Gloria. <laughs> Amen. So we'll see new faces Monday night. Uh, Lord willing, yes. <laughs> As this goes out across Facebook and YouTube Live, uh, Lord willing, we'll see new faces on Monday night. And uh, for those of you that are like, wait a minute, we heard in the beginning that you guys are already in the process. That's okay. We record um, every week so you can go back and catch up, catch up on it. Uh, we do a quick review um, as well. And again, thanks for tuning in to keep your finger in the text live report. I'm going to let these guys go for a moment. And uh, if they want to hold tight just for a few seconds, you can certainly do that. But if you have to go, I understand. Uh, but uh, Brian, Pat, John, thank you, brothers, for joining me on this live report. Thank well. you. Thank well, again. What is there to do on a Monday night if you don't already have plans? Come join us in taking reps. Um, we, we do have the, the great opportunity to dive in uh, to our texts, be able to formulate sermons, and, and we do. That's the benefit. You know, uh, John was talking about and Pat was talking about the, the financial commitment of, you know, $35 a month. But what do you get out of it? You get a sermon that we've worked on and an outline that you can faithfully preach out on the street and you know over the course of a year we will walk away with a handful of outlines and, and lord willing as as we continue on uh, just to build up our portfolio of hard-earned sermons so come join us again if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me um, there's the information um, there sfoi.org uh, forward slash taking reps or 
uh, keep your finger in the text itself or reach out to me via email, keithputzel at gmail.com. Till Thursday, another keep your finger in the text live update. Hope you're blessed and truly keep your finger in the text where we can provide a path to practical, persuasive, powerful preaching.